Mmm, it's an orange juice. What's up, everyone? This is OJ. The Executioner throws its axe like a boomerang. This axe attacks both air and ground units, dealing 140 damage on the way there and 140 on the way back for a total of 280 damage. The Executioner has less health than a bowler. It's about as tanky as an ice golem. In terms of damage, it will dish out about the same DPS as a bowler. If left ignored, it'll deal over a thousand damage to an arena tower. When the Executioner dies, his axe will still continue to fly in the air and eventually come back to where he was. The axe will still deal damage and will kill whatever is left in the axe's path. He can deal with swarm units really well. He can kill dark goblins, fire spirits, ice spirits, stab goblins, minions, skeletons, spear goblins, and archers in one attack. If you pause the replay and look at a wizard or ice wizard, you'll notice that they both have a 1 tile splash radius. The wizard initiates at 5.5 tiles, but because of his splash radius, he can technically reach up to 6.5 tiles behind its original target. The axe shares the same splash radius as it flies. It splashes everything in its path within a 1 tile radius, just demolishing all sorts of units. He has a 5 tile attack range, but the axe itself actually flies 7 tiles. On top of the axe flying 7 tiles far, it also has a 1 tile splash radius, so the axe technically can touch units up to 8 tiles far. Now this sounds really crazy, but it doesn't really change the fact that he doesn't start engaging the unit until he's within 5 tiles. Plus the units are always walking towards him. So this monster reach does not make him a super rural giant sniper. If y'all have watched my log video, you're familiar with area denial. What this means is that for the entire time that the axe is spinning around in the air, which is 1.5 seconds, is the time that your opponent can't play swarm units in that area to defend. So behind a large tank like a giant, he's challenging to defend against. The Executioner has a 2.4 second attack speed. At face value, this appears to be true as he throws his axe every 2.4 seconds. But let's take a closer look. His actual attack speed is 0.9 seconds, and his axe spins in the air for 1.5 seconds. Projectiles in the game are unaffected by buffers, so slows, pushbacks, rage, and free spell do not affect the axe. It'll still fly back to the executioner within 1.5 seconds. Even pushing back the executioner further away won't change his axe flying speed. It'll still fly back to him in 1.5 seconds. So his true attack speed is actually 0.9 seconds. This means under a rage, he attacks 0.3 seconds faster but his axe will still be in the air for 1.5 seconds. Rage will not cause the axe to come back to the executioner quicker. With or without rage, he will still deal the same amount of damage to the tower. The opposite holds true with any slow. His true attack speed is 0.9 seconds. So when he's slowed by an ice wizard, he attacks 0.3 seconds slower, while his axe will still boomerang back after 1.5 seconds. So while frozen by an ice wizard, his attack speed decreases from 2.4 seconds to 2.7 seconds. Rage and slows do not dramatically influence the executioner because they do not affect his axe's flying speed, which will always take 1.5 seconds to return back to him. With the axe having a one tile radius, when it flies back to the executioner, it actually splashes units behind him. Imagine as the axe returns to his core, this radius extends behind his back as well. This 360 degree splash makes it kind of difficult to plant things on top of him, especially swarm units that aren't that durable to begin with. Even if the axe is flying away, the area in front of him is active, so the minions will die. Here's an interesting mechanic the executioner has. He can reset the attack with smaller units. Essentially anything that Fireball can push back, the Executioner can reset. So units like Hog, Valkyrie, Mega Minion, Ice Wizard, Barbarians will all potentially have their attacks reset by his axe attack. Just like Fireball, it will not push back or stun larger units like Prince or Giants. They'll continue attacking unfazed by the spinning axes. It's incredibly evident with Mini P.E.K.K.A since his attack speed is so slow you can hear the sound. It's clear the giant continues attacking uninterrupted while the Mini P.E.K.K.A's attack resets until it finds an opening and finishes off the Executioner. This mechanic is not to be confused with the Zap Stun. It does not reset charge attacks from the Prince, Sparky, Inferno Dragon, or Inferno Tower. It's exactly like a Fireball and does not influence these units. 
Since it does influence all medium and smaller units like the Hog, it will reset its startup frame. This means if the Hog raises his hammer, it will reset his attack entirely, and he'll have to start from the beginning. Here the Hog only managed to get two shots off of the tower. Of course this sounds very scary and broken, but it's not a perma stun. You have to time it precisely so that the axe hits right as he's about to finish his swing. Otherwise, stunning him before he initiates his attack doesn't change the outcome. Here the Hog managed to get three shots off of the tower. This pushback mechanic resets attack startup frames. It's not quite as evidence with the bowler or the log, because it looks like the act of pushing them back pulls them out of range. This is not to be confused with zap or freeze. If you zap or freeze a hog, you're temporarily suspending him in the exact frame and he continues attacking. Freeze and zap share the same mechanics, so if you watch as the hog thaws from the freeze spell, he finalizes his swing because his attack was never reset. Just like any pushback mechanic, this interrupts their attack, doesn't cause them to retarget. So if you log a musketeer, it's not going to switch to the nearest target. It just interrupts her attack. Same applies with the executioner's attack. It interrupts their attack, but it won't cause them to retarget. The musketeer won't target onto the ice golem. Since the bowler only shoots straight, it makes the most sense to surround the bowler so he can't splash everything. But when you surround the Executioner, he'll end up splashing most things including a few units behind him. This makes small distraction tanks like the Ice Golem more valuable than ever. Whether or not you surround him with Barbarians, the outcome is basically the same. The Barbarians take quite a bit of damage because of his 360 splash. Against the Hog Rider depends on when you time the stun. If you can reset his attack right as he's about to swing, you'll get the most value out of the Executioner, preventing the Hog from getting more than one hit off of your tower. Planting the Executioner in front works best because it also blocks the Hog Rider. The Executioner with the assistance of the tower can take out a single balloon, but the balloon's death bomb will still touch the tower. So you'll want to be mindful of the angle you place your Executioner when countering the balloon. When there's a tank in front, even an Ice Golem, the Executioner is not strong enough to take out the balloon by itself. The balloon will manage to reach the tower. And that's the best case scenario, assuming that the balloon is perfectly aligned with the Ice Golem. When they're planted in separate tiles, it can mess up the angle of the Executioner's axe, causing him to completely miss the balloon. You're going to need some extra firepower like Fireball or Mega Minion to take out the balloon since the Ice Golem tanks your arena tower. The same applies with the Lava Loon combo. Alone he is not strong enough to take out a balloon. You're gonna need some extra juice to take out this combo. If you kill the Lava Hound with the Executioner, the Spinning Axe will actually stun and splash all of the pups, locking them into a vulnerable clump. Just like a bowler, he can take out Goblin Barrel when placed correctly, but it will kill Stab Goblins on the way back, so the Goblins will still manage to get some chip damage off of the tower. Adding another counter to Elite Barbarians, he can tank just enough to take out Barbs planted at the bridge. He'll die, but it'll still be a positive elixir trade. If you want to make a really good trade, you can always kite the Elite Barbarians with an Ice Golem, or even something as small as Ice Spirit or Skeletons to keep him alive for a counter push. Alone the Executioner is not too difficult to counter. If you only have Barbarians on hand, they'll be enough to shut him down, but they'll take quite a beating from him. An Ice Wizard is pretty expensive, and while his slow barely affects the Executioner, he does only cost 3 Elixir, so he can take out the Executioner for a positive trade. I'd like to see the Mini P.E.K.K.A come back into the meta. He can tank a bit of the Executioner and take him out with 2 swings for another positive trade. A Musketeer can pretty much defend against the Executioner as well. She can take him out and will walk away with a sliver of health. But the best way to defend against a single Executioner is to have an Ice Golem distract him until the tower takes him out. The Executioner doesn't have that much health, it's roughly the same as a Baby Dragon, but the difference is that his axe packs a huge punch, so in larger battles it's better to use a tank to distract him, just like a bowler. You just have to position the Ice Golem at a different angle to completely protect the back end units. This tank to distract the Executioner doesn't necessarily need to be a regular unit. It can be a building. Ideally, Inferno Tower is quite a bit of health. 
and can take care of the tank in front of the executioner while distracting him so you can angle your units safely away from him. If we see a rise in giant executioner combos, Inferno starts to make sense to use. Since he does only have a thousand health, you can rocket him for a one hit kill. If he's planted behind the King's Tower, this is a bonus because you can clip an arena tower for one extra elixir. Or if he's clumped up protecting a huge death ball, the rocket will snipe him alongside the other units for a positive trade. So while the Executioner shares an incredibly fast load time with the Dark Goblin, its attack speed is severely limited because he has to wait 1.5 seconds for the axe to return before he can start attacking again. At first glance he's very easy to use, but he's difficult to master to be able to place him perfectly to deny the startup frame of units. He's a unit that shares similarities with the bowler and wizard, but is not a replacement for the bowler because the bowler has more health and doesn't hit air units. And while it has more health than a wizard, it attacks much slower than him. But it offers stronger area denial and more splashing opportunities. My opinion is that it doesn't replace the bowler, but it certainly can be a substitute as a tankier wizard at 5 elixir. Sure, it can deal over a thousand damage to arena tower alone, but so can a wizard. Nobody leaves a wizard alone to wreck a tower. With its interesting splash abilities, if the executioner comes into the meta, we can be sure that mini P.E.K.K.A will make a lot more sense to use again. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more quality OJ.